Rubab, can you hear me? I'm just testing. Yes, I can. Sorry, did you hear that, Holly? <laughs> I did, thank you. Okay, great, thanks. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mayor Mandy Martin, and I call this Township of Crammy Committee of the Whole meeting to order on Tuesday, June 21st, 2022 at 6.04 p.m. As we gather, we formally recognize the traditional keepers of this land and specifically our neighbors of the Alderville First Nation. We respectfully acknowledge that Crammy Township is located on the Mississauga Ashnabic territory, which is the traditional territory of the Mississauga. Crammy Township respectfully acknowledges that the Mississauga nations are the collective stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. <laughs> In accordance with bylaw 202017, members of the public are to advise the mayor or the clerk of the use of devices for transcribing or recording the proceedings of open session by auditory or visual means prior to the meeting. I'd like a confirmation of the agenda, be it resolved that the agenda for the June 21st, 2022 committee of the whole meeting be approved as presented. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Okay, sir. Second, Clark. All in favor? Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Van Egmond, aye. Martin, aye. Have any members a declaration of pecuniary interest or conflicts to declare at this point? Hearing none, we move to item six on the agenda. The agenda question period. Individuals must submit their questions to the clerk's office no later than one hour prior to the meeting. Questions must be submitted pertaining to an item on the current agenda and are not to be an opinion, statement, or comments. Any submissions that are not a question or do not pertain to an item on this particular agenda will be omitted. All questions will be read aloud during the question period by the clerk and or the chair. And we have no questions submitted. And we have no delegations or presentations this evening. Item eight on our agenda, be it resolved that committee of the whole approve the minutes of the following meetings. Committee of the whole, May 10th, 2022. Committee of adjustment, April 19th, 2022. And May 17th, 2022. The library advisory board, Minutes for 2021 and 2022. The Heritage Committee for February 24th, 2022 and March 31st, 2022. The Fire Advisory Committee, May 19th, 2022. And the Water and Wastewater Advisory from February 9th, 2022. And Transportation Advisory Committee from May 4th, 2022. We can have a motion that will pass all of these at once, or if anyone has any questions about any of these items, then we can pull them out and discuss separately. Could I have a motion please to approve them all? Move Gilligan. Second, Clark. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Van Eggman, aye. Martin, aye. He dodged a bullet, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> um, item 10, no, community services, nine. 
a security system for the Castleton Library, Library Report 0122. Be it resolved that Committee of the Whole receive the report, Library 0122, for information, and that Committee of the Whole recommend that Council fund the camera installation at the Castleton Library from the Township Building Reserve in the amount of $3,660. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Move Gilligan. Second, Van Eggman. Any discussion? Sandra, Deputy Mayor Sandra Arthur. Um, I was looking at these, um, oh, excuse me, quotes, and I can't seem to match the numbers that you've come up with on here. So I'm not sure what we're, what we're up to. When we look at the first one, um, quote number two, it says within the package, it adds up to 3470, and I don't see that as an amount. And then when I go to the other one, that adds up to 3,050 and I don't see that. So what have we done, please? Um, hi, Deputy Mayor Arthur. Um, I requested this quote from Alliance Security. So they gave me the quote, but they only gave it to me for Castleton. They put the cost of the TV for the wall on Colburn just in the email text. So I had to add that cost to the original quote. And then um, Chris asked me what it would cost to expand the ability to have more cameras in the future. You know, I think he was thinking about possibly the car park and upstairs at the Castleton building. So that's why you have the second quote. So there are two quotes and a separate email, which I did send in the package that actually has, I apologize for that, the, the quote for the TV at the Coleman site. The idea being that, yes, we're fully up to speed with cameras in the Colburn Library, but the OPP officer, who's now a member of the library board, said that unless people can actually see themselves on the TV screen on the wall, it doesn't matter how many cameras you have because they don't actually believe the cameras are working. So you have to have the screen there on the wall for the public to see. So that's the main reason for this. Sandra, are you all right with that? Thanks, Holly. Okay. <laughs> it's just when I look at this and I see the amount that you have on there is a 3470 plus HST. But what I it is, is you haven't hand wrote the $190 on this top part for the cost of the transmitter by the looks of it. So maybe that's what's happening on the second one as well, because at 3,050, it doesn't match up to here, right? So is that what that 190 is? 042, 32. Yeah, that'd be the 3240. It's just like, you couldn't get it to match up, so. Sorry, Deputy Mayor Arthur, I should have insisted that they give me a cleaner quote, but it, it was a matter of time, so I just left it the way it was. But Chris wants to add to that, that it's the 100. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Chris Kerwin, Parks Recreation Facilities Manager. Um, the, uh, the change in the price was due to the $190 panic button that wasn't included. Um, that's what the difference is in the two numbers. And the second quote was just the thought of, if we're gonna invest in putting this software system into the building, we might as well be able to expand in the future uh, if we wanna add it to other parts of the building. So the original quote had no um, opportunity for expansion in the future. And the second quote or the increase in price was due to being able to add up to 12 cameras down the road. Okay, so all in favor of $3,660. Hi, Arthur. Hi, Clark. Gilligan, I. Van Eggman, I. Martin, I. Carried. 10 reports of municipal officers, 10A, bylaw enforcement. 
by law enforcement bylaw 0322 be it resolved that committee of the whole receive this report for information and that committee of the whole recommend council provide direction to the bylaw department by choosing one of the following options one continue service with the Northumberland Humane Society as per the attached contract agreement, or two, request Northumberland Humane Society provide service for the remainder of 2022 while the bylaw department goes out for a request for quotes for animal quote, animal control service as per the municipal procurement bylaw. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Move Clark. Second, Gilligan. Discussion. You have to make a choice. <laughs> or not. Roger, would you like to address this? Good evening, uh, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Councillors. Roger Damon, Karami Bylaw. So, the municipal, the former municipal animal control service was disbanded, as the report indicates, and it was assumed by the uh, Northumberland Humane Society. Um, they have taken over the building. They're looking after the animal control service. Um, if anyone has any questions, I, I, I truly believe within the report, it speaks to a, a timeline as to what was the notice of of the Humane Society taking over. Um, it speaks to chain of events that have led us to this point in time where I'm just simply looking for direction and for council to make a decision as to what we are going to do as a municipality to provide animal control service. So if anyone has any specific questions, um, I've included the Northumberland Humane Society contract offer. I've included the joint animal control monthly statistics for the year of 2021 from the previous animal control service. And in the highlighted areas, you will see that um, we did not have a lot of intake on stray dogs. And I just believe that there is an alternative way to provide a service to the municipality for animal control. Um, obviously it's, it's gonna have to be put out through procurement, but um, my preliminary findings suggest that uh, there are locations out there that would be interested in having the opportunity to provide the municipality with animal control service. But I'm just asking at this point in time that if council could give a direction or make a decision as to how they would like to proceed at this point. Thank you. Personally, it's Mandy Martin speaking. I, I go for number two. Personally, I go for number two, as you are suggesting. In other words, that uh, Humane Society continue for the remainder of 2022 while you look into a request for service uh, with the new council coming in. I, I, would, I would agree with that, Councillor Van Egmond. Um, I would agree with Mandy on that. Um, I, I believe that the Northumberland Humane Society might also come into line with some of their pricing because when it costs us almost a thousand dollars per animal um, to have this service for for uh, dogs that are just picked up because they won't even catch them, they they dogs have to be tied on somebody's porch or tied to a mailbox before they'll even come out. So, and I I know Roger hasn't really mentioned, but he has been out to see. Um, different people on how things could be handled. So I also agree. Um, number two is the option to go with here. Uh, sorry, uh, Roger here with the Crammy bylaw. I just wanted to indicate to Councillor Van Eggman that I had uh, spoken to 
the treasurer of the Northumberland Humane Society, and I did ask for a cost per dog formula, um, as it indicates in the uh, in the uh, report, and it was decided upon that uh, they could not deviate from their current uh, business plan. Um, it wouldn't. They said it wouldn't be fair to the other municipalities, as the other municipalities had come on board with their new um, service. And as far as the comment about um, reaching out, that was part of my preliminary findings. I, I, I did reach out to different locations to just test the waters to see if this was, was something they would even be interested in. And the feedback was that yes, we would be interested in something like that. Um, whether it's kennels or rescue, I did approach uh, and did speak to both types of uh, animal, animal services. And like I said, the preliminary findings were that there are uh, locations out there that would be interested in, in having the opportunity to come forward and provide the animal control service in conjunction with us. And so that's part of the reason I feel that um, I'm not making a decision as to what we're counsel to go with this. It's just that I'm confident that there are institutions out there, businesses, rescue kennels that would be interested in having the opportunity to, to provide the service. So that's kind of where I'm at on that. Thank you. So uh, the motion is we're presented with the two options. Are we are we saying that we want option two? Okay. What do we need? A motion to that effect? Just that we're going for two. So all in favor of option two. Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Vanigman, aye. Martin, aye. Carried. Thank you, Roger. Clerk's Department, delegation of powers during lane duck period of the municipal election 2022. Be it resolved that council receive the report, Clerk's 1022 report for information, and that a bylaw be presented for approval to delegate joint authority to Director of Administrative Services Clerk, as well as Director of Operations Fire Chief during a period of restricted acts in the 2022 municipal election year. Could I have a mover and a second? Move Clark. Second Gilligan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Van Egmond, aye. Parks, Rec, and Facilities, BB. Free Facility Usage, Rec Re Recreation Report 2022. Be it resolved that Committee of the Whole receive this report for information and that Committee of the Whole recommend that Council give clear direction stating which community groups are approved and what exactly they are approved for. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Move, Finn Egmond. Second, Clark. Chris Kerwin, our manager, would you like to speak to this, please? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Martin. Uh, I'll go through the report here briefly. Um, there's not a lot of content in there, but it's very important stuff that uh, we've been dealing with here in the Recreation Department. Uh, so on May 7th, 2019, uh, Operations 1119 report was brought to Council, and it looks like it was received for information. That report outlined community groups that were approved to use certain facilities free of charge. The approved groups have free access to the Castleton Town Hall, as well as one free event at the Keeler Centre per year. However, several groups have been given multiple free rentals per year at the Keeler Centre, as per previous staff members. Other groups make a yearly donation to the township and then host their meetings free of charge. You'll see the list of 21 uh, groups listed there. Um, so this current operation is very difficult and time consuming to track. Uh, and I will say coming to the township six months ago, walking into it was very difficult. 
Um, there's a lot of, you know, I had disagreement with this person or this person said this person. Uh, so just looking for some clear direction on who is approved for what, um, and then we can go from there. Important to note, we did change our fees and charges bylaw that stated that Castleton Town, Town Hall was free of charge. So there is now a fee for that. So that also changes this a little bit. Uh, another comment I had was donations are not actually covering hall usage. We're getting donations for $75 and groups are using $500 worth of space. So it's just not adding up. And like I said, very difficult to track for myself and I'm sure for finance department as well. Um, and then financial implications, uh, free facility usage has resulted in significant revenue loss. Our event calendar is very populated and is therefore difficult to book other events. So we're getting calls, emails to, you know, book birthday parties, Jack and Jill's different events, but the calendar is full because there's so many others using the facility, which is great, but we're not getting the revenue that we should be getting. Um, and my recommendation, uh, is that. Council created a clear resolution stating what community groups are approved for and exactly what they're approved for. So, I'd like like this addressed uh, quickly as well because it, this is uh, I thought we'd put this all to bed because when I first got on council, there was basically no income coming in, and we passed all this and I don't know how it got out of hand and where anyone thought they had the authority not to pay. And a donation is a donation and it's not a fee. So you pay the fee and if you wanna pay an extra $75 on top of the fee is great, but a donation is not a fee. So where these groups thought, I, I don't know how it could, like this is the first to my knowledge, but we passed this as council several years. And I would even go one step further because it's been abused. I would say no more free use is not even the one time a year. I think it's ridiculous now because it's been abused. By all these groups, if all these groups are using this for nothing, this is unreal. This is totally, they, no one came to council. For heaven's sakes, they come to council <coughs> to see if they can use the park uptown. This is all in a bylaw. No one gets free uses here. This is ridiculous, this has gone on. So that list means nothing to me. That list should be gone. Nobody gets free uses starting today. That's the way I'd, I'd pass a bylaw starting today. They're not writing it, <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, if I was, I'd say the same thing. I would. And you can write that down too, because I was adamant. This is a first session of council before in the previous, previous council that I said this had to end. I spent years on the committee getting this place built. I gave money. I never got free uses. Why should these groups get free uses? Sorry. I agree with you, Donnie. Like, I think it's easier that we abolish the bylaw, basically, and that people, you know, as you said, they come for the park. If there's some special event, then they can come to council. And it's also clean the slate for the new council, um, that it's start fresh, basically. And there's nothing on the books, basically, that they can decide to. And if there's a special event or something they want, they can come for a special request instead of just having this free, free, free. As you said, Donnie, it's, you know, it has to be fee driven. And we can't, as you said, Chris, you know, we, we can't be $75 using $500 of staff time and, and building expect to, to have this place showing, a, you know, even close to being profitable or I, I guess we're not supposed to be profitable. Are we were supposed to just break even? But I, I definitely agree with you, Donnie, that, you know, want to wipe it out completely. And I thought we had done that before as well for example like Colburn Cramer Mine and Hockey Association Colburn Cramer figure skating they get a subsidy anyway on on the rate so we can adjust rates down but a free does not work at all because uh why I brought this up I had the same issue we booked I booked uh, the hall for safe communities for the it's a, a Northumberland group and the, it was booked full. And I said, who had it? And it was all for free use. And then I had a paying customer coming in and we couldn't bring them in. So that's why I brought it forward probably, I don't know, four or five years ago now. Thank you. If I may, Van Egmond here. 
Um, the only thing that in our committee meeting that I thought we could maybe make an allowance for Donnie was um, when the hockey organization or the baseball organization or the figure skating organization, when they needed to have a place to meet, that they could meet here as long as there was staff on duty and the hall was open. Um, we did bring that up in the meeting and I, it, it's not a use as per se, but there's no place in town where these groups can meet together unless it's in someone's house. So I thought that maybe we could have it if, um, if staff is here anyway, and the upstairs is open, that if they need to have a hockey meeting or a figure skating meeting or a community type based meeting, as long as there was staff on duty, that we could do something like that. So Chris, if I may, out of the 21 groups in the last six months, how many of those groups have used the hall for free? I would say eight. I've only met or spoken with eight of these groups who consistently use the facilities. Um, Mary Norton, CEO of the library. Could I speak to the ukulele group? Um, so at a previous council, Mayor Coombs had told me that library programs where the numbers couldn't be coped within the library could come to the Keeler Centre for free. But I, I do agree that that has to stop. But um, and moving forward, I'll try and ensure that when I'm applying for grants or anything like that, I, I put the fee for the use of the Keeler Centre there too. The ukulele group, I don't think we're intent intentionally exploiting it. They just got so large, Donnie, that we moved them over here and we didn't really think about the impact cost-wise. So perhaps we might give them a few weeks to absorb this rather than saying to them that they've got to start paying from next week because I feel a bit bad because the library had given them that impression. I do understand where you're all coming from. I, I'm just wondering what to do for that particular group, which is so big and so active in the very short term. So I think with the, with an organization like that, for example, the problem is that here they are on Saturdays, right? The ukulele club or whatever, when they come in, but nothing else gets booked. A Tuesday, but I've been here Saturdays too, when they've been here. Saturday mornings. Have I not been here? I, I mean, I think I know the sound of a ukulele. Um, officially, they only have it on a Tuesday, so I, I just can't speak to a Saturday. Perhaps they're kind of sneaking into practice. I have no idea. But that should be stopped straight away, right? Because Saturdays make money. And that's where I think, you know, it's one thing if the place was empty or if staff was here, but if so, someone's looking to book this and we've already got people that at no cost, we're losing twice. And it's, you know, uh, I think we've really got to be careful, you know, regards to who, when, and it start with a clean slate, basically. And we have to go forward with, you know, as everything, everything's user fees in order to keep everything going. It is like a cost of gasoline now or whatever. This place has to be maintained. I mean, our staff, our staff have to be paid. The heat has to be on. The water has to be, you know, paid. The, the washrooms have to be cleaned. Somebody complains that they, they don't have toilet paper or something and everybody goes off here and scare them or, you know, can I get a piece of ice? Can I get this? It goes on and on. It just, it's out of hand. The Millet Pipe, or Piper Creek, by the way, I mean, they left. They're gone. <laughs> They're in Prince Edward County, uh, renting out their place for money. <laughs> I'll just close, Mandy. The point I'm trying to make anyway is that 
this policy is in place. It was never changed. So that where where people had the authority to say they're not paying, I don't know where that came from. So whether the new council wants to give it for free, you're right. I'm not running. I don't personally care if they don't want to pay going forward. That's fine. But the policy is in place now. So the policy should everyone should pay. And I don't care if it's God. They have to pay. That's the way it is. Like the policy was never changed. So I said it's ludicrous that you would. So <coughs> someone would come and ask for the use of the park uptown on a Saturday or Sunday and get permission from us. And no one asked for, for, and we said we gave up the freebies, but I remember when we did the costs, they were not exorbitant costs. We tried to keep the costs quite low for the people in the community, but there is a cost. And the fact is when you have free uses, it gets abused. So they, here we have Tuesday and Saturday because it's free. Why not have it Tuesday through, through Saturday? If it's free, that's 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 the point I'm trying to make. Thank you. Well, I think too, if I understand it correctly, people save up their their one freebie per quote year, even though they're free all year. But then they say, okay, then we'll, their biggest money maker of the year, like the harvest auction for the Rotary or the carnival for the, you know, and and it lo and behold, it turns into a three day. Not a one event, it's a, but it's a three-day event and they want the freebie. Um, so it is abused and it has to stop. Do we not have what Donnie is speaking about already in place? Do we just not hold people to what's there already? I, I'm not sure, Chris, maybe you can... From the looks of the 2019 report, it, uh, there's free access to the Castleton Town Hall and one free event at the Keeler Center. So again, what we are seeing is higher usage of Castleton for those groups that utilize that building. Uh, but we've also seen free usage of the Keeler Center more than once. And coming in, I was told that there was agreements in place with this and that and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just looking to have something that is crystal clear Cut and dry, what are we doing? There was a schedule of rates put in place. There was a policy. Is it not on the books? Can we not find it? So yeah, we have that report that was received for information, but I think important to note is that we did change our fees for Castleton Town Hall. So on our fee bylaw, it no longer states that it's free. So now we're, I guess, looking for a resolution. If we are still going to offer free usage at Castle to Town Hall to all of these groups, we need a resolution that says that staff don't have to follow that bylaw, the fees and charges bylaw for these groups for that building. Anything. Are we only dealing with Castleton Town Hall? Right. I believe what Chris is saying is Castleton Town Hall was always delegated as being free, which has now changed and fees have been um, added. Until we've recently updated our fees and charges bylaw, it was actually listed on that older bylaw that it was free. I apologize. That fees schedule was set up because I remember seeing because it was four hours or less or a one eight hour rental. So that fee schedule, I remember seeing that we passed that several years ago. Sorry, Holly, clerk, you were going to say something? Yes, the, the past fees and charges bylaw, which was 2018-something, only had charges 
at the Keeler Center, the Castleton Town Hall was free. So, yes. <laughs> so moving forward, and what I'm gathering, and I just also wanted to make another point that at budget time, our bylaw on grants and applications applies to anything and everything. So let's just say that there was a club that could bring to council at budget time proof that say it would cost them five or $6,000 to rent the hall for what they need. And at that point, council can make the decision as per the budget to give them grant money towards it or to have a lesser fee charge with it. So there's also that option to bring it before council as well, not just always a one-off on these. Um, I do need a motion to amend whichever council decides. Thus far, I have that no fee free usage will apply to any buildings that we have, um, that you must come before council when needed for special events or budget time with the grants, and that sporting groups slash clubs will be supported with a meeting site if the hall and staff permit. Um, that was the point that Ed Van Engman, Councillor Van, Ed Van Engman was making as a meeting site for um, the sports clubs. Because what happens is they're meeting in, an, in a, a dressing room to sort of go over um, you know, their scheduling and stuff like this. And there isn't anywhere within the community for them to meet. So to charge them $100, $200 to rent a hall to do that you know, five, 10 minute meeting, what um, Councillor Van Eggman is saying is that if, if staff is here and the hall is not being used and they need it for a one-off five, 10 minutes that they could meet here and not be charged. Buttons. People are talking about alternate meeting sites they used to use, and one was the Friendship House, and one was the Legion. And um, since you guys are loath to punch your buttons, and, and somewhere else, I'll punch them for you. Anyway, around town. So, but if it's going to be, if it's going to be, while well, staff is here, I don't think it should be carte blanche. You can have the Rotary Hall or whatever, then go down and meet in the lobby or in front of the fireplace there. Sorry. <laughs> I, I was saying, uh, Councillor Gulligan here, in regards to, uh, I think we'll leave that, I prefer to leave it up to the discretion of, of our, uh, our manager, Chris Kerwin, that he can decide basically if it's gonna be a five minute meeting, the staff is here, and I, I agree with your, well, if we were discussing before with the motion um, with fees for everywhere, basically that there's nowhere free um, immediately and that apply one off. So if people are still want to uh, approach us or go through, as you're saying, uh, Holly is at a grant time is no better time. It's budget time is to figure out and come forward then to say what can be at budget time, not 30 times during the year. So Chris, the question I would have to you is, are you aware in the next two months of anybody that's got any major event planned that's on this list that's asking for it for free that if we were to change it tonight as of effective the first of July, who will this affect? I wouldn't say any major events. The, the majority of the eight groups that I see is just a regular basis, a regular meeting once, twice a week where they're just coming in, doing their meeting and then going. So uh, as far as I know, there's no major events that will be affected by this in the next couple months. I'm sorry, it's Mary from the library again. Could I just add to this? We have a program room, beautiful program room in the library expansion in Colburn. So I had a request fairly recently to do yoga classes. So I talked to Chris about it and he sent me the bylaw, the new bylaw with the different prices. So there was one that said community health and support. I think it was a two hour thing, right, Holly? And it was a particular fee. And I decided I should start charging fees for things that are not particularly library programs because ultimately, it is a township building and I don't want to be in competition with the Keeler Center because half of my flock over because I don't know how many we're talking about individually how many numbers in a group, but I, I don't want that situation where we're in competition with each other, 
So I said, well, I'm going by the bylaw and this is the fee. So that whether she had been here or in the library program room, she would still have to have paid the same. Actually, the downtown, the community policing office is not in use, but apparently I understand from Ed Josto that he wants to come back as a revitalize the community policing. But in the meantime, it's not there. But by the same token, you certainly don't want bingo back there, you know, while we're upstairs selling lottery licenses. I think if there's a space available, like for, for example, confine it to one room, begin with one room, and that's, that's the room that's up for dibs or whatever, whatever, and a fee is going to apply. And then depending on the need or whatever, whatever, but there can't be this, you know, pulling the hat out of the, the rabbit out of the hat and saying, now I'm, now I'm gonna have my freebie. Um, for the seven hundred or a thousand dollar WAP, uh, that's not on. But somehow or other, there has to be some payment. And I don't care whether you assess it on the value of, you know, the staff that you've got on at the moment, and and what you're paying them per per hour or whatever, or the cost of maintaining a room, or a lobby, or the or the area in front. I mean, that is a public space down there, in front of that in front of that fireplace. That's a meeting area. That's perfect for these impromptu, let's just meet there, you know. But you can't have a whole hall and expect it all to be cleaned and set up for you and then torn down for you. I agree. <laughs> I agree with what you're saying. And, and again, it's a push to these, maybe it's a letter, a general letter, Chris, that goes out to these groups that this is a decision of council moving forward and prep them for a November. Rhubarb will come up with a date here for our budget time that if they wishing to move forward, they need to bring a plan together in the grant process, present to, to council for budget information. And you know they need to meet X amount of times. It's for what reasons. And at that point, the new council will, review and say yes for 2023, you can whatever or it won't, but that gives them something still to bring forward to council at a later date. So we're not saying it could be, I mean, the new council, but it's, this has to stop. I mean, the other, the other meeting spaces is, is the new addition to the library, for example, but that's being booked for for programs and so and you should have that priority for your library programs it's it's understood right but you cannot you cannot have your yoga there at 10 o'clock on saturday mornings so na 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 <laughs> so the um i think the only reason they came was that the keeler center wasn't going to be available because was it summer and the staff weren't around or something so they came to me because it wasn't available but I still felt I should not be giving this to them for free. So I said they'd have to pay. I would just say we're trying to enforce the policy that was already in place. with the addition of Castleton also. And the only thing that I would like to add is that there is a discretion for Chris, that if something comes up and he needs to, that he has that availability. And he kept it logged that if somebody comes back and complains, he can answer because it's 
documented somewhere for council, but definitely put something in there that Chris has the authority not having to come back each time. But are we giving one free to everybody then still, or are we top of that? So there's nothing for free, right? But the, the previous one says it was one for free. So we are altering, right? We're not going with what the policy is now. We're actually altering the policy to say that there is no one free and we're going for both Castle and Town, town Hall. Going forward, it's not free. We're going to notify the, the groups. Yeah, for what's September 1st. Does that work for you, Chris? Like what's the, are they going to have 35 meetings between now and September? Yeah, that certainly works. I think it's fair to all the community groups that we're, we're setting a date in the future that they have enough time if they want to find alternate accommodation, they have the time to do so. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Ben Egmond, aye. Martin, aye. Thank you, Chris. I that it is not easy. There's some really tough. It's tough and the heartstrings and all that and hammer and tong. But know that you have some backing here. Okay, Kim and Sam customer appreciation event, recreation report 1822, be it resolved that committee of the whole receive this report for information and that committee of the whole recommend that council approve the attached parks facility use application, which would allow the Kim and Sam team to host a customer appreciation event on Saturday, August 6th from 12 to 7 p.m. Where are they having this? Uh, Victoria Square, the application was for Victoria Square Park, Saturday, August 6th, uh, from 12 to 7. The event's going to include live music, a barbecue, face painting, a bouncy castle, and more. And it's free to all uh, the public to attend. Is there a move and a seconder? I just want to interject for a minute, Mandy, the fact that is a, they have the, uh, the use of park in the I, on uh, for yard sales on Saturday. So, so should we stipulate if we okay this, that they should be, the yard sales should be out of there by noon? If you're talking about Roseanne Quinn's uh, market, they're in the northwest side of the park onto themselves. And usually they're packing up at one. I don't think they'd intrude. They're just four or five stalls up in that north, that corner opposite the Hasiak building. And frankly, at one o'clock, I think there are only two two little booths left every Saturday. I did speak with Roseanne as well, and she said she's willing to work with this group to make everything work together. Any further discussion? All in favor? I'd just like to add something. This is a proper way to come forward to get free use. Thank you. Sorry, through you, Madam Mayor, I missed the first and seconder for that motion for it to be on the floor for discussion. Was there one? I'll, I'll move. Clark, move. Second, Gilligan. All in favor? Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Van Egmond, aye. Martin, aye. 10CC, Parks Opening and Closing Date, Recreation Report 1922, be it resolved the Committee of the Whole receive this report, and the Committee of the Whole recommend that Council approve a yearly Parks Opening Day, a Victoria Day, Monday, and a yearly Parks Closing Day, 
of Thanksgiving Monday. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved, Arthur. Second, Clark. Any discussion? Chris, would you like to address this? Uh, yes, thank you. So currently, Cramie Township does not have any set dates for parks opening and closing. Uh, it's kind of a well-known thing, but you never know nowadays what can happen. So uh, something like this is you know, very important. So we're not responsible for putting salt on a slide in the middle of December. Somebody slips and falls. We didn't do our due diligence. Everybody knows the park is closed, but we don't have anything to actually state that. Uh, so very important. I'm um, hoping to get a resolution today. We would then sign it saying parks are open from this date to this date. Outside of those times, they're unmaintained and used at your own risk. Brilliant. Mover and a seconder. All in favor? Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Van Eggman, aye. Martin, aye. Carried. 10D, Planning and Development. D11, Jebco 0322, a site plan agreement amendment for 188 King Street East, Jebco Planning. 4122. Be it resolved that Committee of the Whole receive this report for information. The Committee of the Whole direct staff to prepare an amendment to the site plan agreement between Jebco Manufacturing Inc. and the Township of Crammy to be brought forward to the next available council meeting for approval upon completion of the stormwater and lot grading review. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Move, Gilligan. Second, Van Egmond. Any discussion? All in favor? No, I, I have a discussion. Oh. Okay, sorry. I, I looked over the plans now. I looked over the plans, Victoria, but is there a uh, plan to upgrade the uh, delivery on the, is it where I read in the report, upgrade the delivery on the east end of the building? Uh, yes, um, so there's the main part is the addition and then they're going to be um, adding an additional parking area, driving, delivery, turnaround area. That's part of it. Um, so, sorry, I'm just trying to get my bearings. Um, I believe it's on the west side. But um, on the eastern, there it is, sorry. Yes, it's on the eastern, the eastern driveway. My, my apologies. Yes, I've noticed just in recent days, there's been an issue there. There's sometimes as many as four transports and there can only get one off and backed up. But there's been like today, for example, I was going to Brighton, there was about four transports backed up waiting for, and there's no way to get off the road right now, so. Okay, yeah. Um, just to kind of go over it, the whole purpose of this application is because they've noticed the um, exponential increase in demand for their services and they've gotten just so busy that they need to have this extra space, um, warehouse space as well as manufacturing space. Um, and then the increase to for the driveway as well. So I'm I'm confident that this will help meet their needs. If they still if it still isn't, then they need to come back again and fix this. Um, but at least it's providing some kind of interim or hopefully final um, more space and better service for the manufacturing. Thank you. Did we have a mover and a seconder? All in favor? Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Van Eggman, aye. Martin, aye. Carried. Item 10 DB, D14, Big Apple 0422, Golden Colburn Orchard, Inc., Temporary Use Bylaw, 218 Orchard Road, Colburn, Ontario, Plan 4222. Be it resolved that Committee of the Whole received this report from EcoView Consulting Services regarding the application from the Big Apple for information. And that the Committee of the Whole recommend that Council approve bylaw 
which will be numbered, to permit for a, a temporary period of one year with possibility for renewal. A petting zoo, dog park, and commercial parking lot on the subject property. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Move, Gilligan. Second, Van Egmond. Any discussion? Deputy Mayor Arthur. I just have one quick question. Where does the Golden Colburn Orchard Inc. come from? Uh, manager of Planning, Victoria Heffernan here. Uh, it's the company name that's on the property. It's just, I, I'm assuming it's so that the two properties don't merge on title um, because even the Big Apple, the other property, it's not, there is a numbered company, of course, but the lands are registered to a name. So that's just where it comes from. This particular property is in this name. Thank you. Um, if I may, just because this is a bit of a touchy subject, um, the official plan for the township allows for temporary use bylaws, and the Act does this as well, for up to three years. Because of issues that we've had in the past, it was recommended to me by EcoView Consulting Services that we could limit and put in the bylaw, that's why I left it as a rough number because we don't have one yet, like we have a draft um, that we limit it to one year. So they have to come back in one year and do this all over again. And that's to, and we can take it away if they continue to not follow the zoning and the temporary use that we're putting in place. So it still allows them to have the continued use. This is not a permanent fix. This is just to allow them to get their application in for the official plan amendment and the proper zoning bylaw amendment. Um, but again, like because of the commercial significance of it to Colburn itself. We want them to continue operating. However, we need to have some kind of stopper in place to make sure that they are following the rules that we do have there. It's been a little bit lax in the last couple of years, but we wanna put a stop to that. And this is the way that I'm confident that we can do so. So if we want to also include in the bylaw that um, council would prefer the one year, uh, we can do that or two or three. I, I would go with the two or three, uh, if, if even those. I, I feel that if a company is going to move forward like this, um, maybe they took some liberties, but uh, they're a big enough group that um, we don't have to hold them to a one year and have them come back in a year. Some of these things may, might take longer than a year to put into place. So I'd at least like to see two or three years. Any other comments? Personally? I think you have to start drawing the line in the sand with some of these things. They have gone on for four years almost now on permits and so on. It's not, it's hardball sometimes. And we have some big projects on the go. Um, everything is so drawn out. If, if you just did it correctly the first time, <laughs> it would save so much staff time and effort. So that being said, I am proposing one year. Since that wasn't a motion, I would say two years is my recommendation. I would like to make that motion. And I'll second Ed's motion of two years. And is that two years from today? Sorry, um, to answer your question, uh, Deputy Mayor, it would be from the date of the bylaw that has passed, two years from that date. I can live with that. But the motion that we have on the floor says one year. So what are we doing? Hello, everybody's waving. Hi. Through you, Madam Mayor, to members of council, we can strike out the one and change it to a two. We don't need another motion to do so. It's a friendly amendment. We can keep the motion that's on the floor. If all are in favor for that. All in favor of the two-year bylaw. 
I are, sir. I Clark. Gilligan, I. Ben Eggman, I. Martin, I. Carried. 10 DC zoning bylaw amendment. D14 Timchuk 0722 230 Union Road, Planning Report 3222. Be it resolved that Committee of the Whole receive this report for information and that staff be directed to prepare a zoning bylaw amendment to implement the recommendations of this report for consideration by Council at their next available meeting. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Move, Gilligan. Second, Clerk. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye, sir. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Ben Egmond, aye. Ten DD Downtown Modernization and Revitalization Status Update Planning Report 3822. Be it resolved that Committee of the Whole receive report this report for information, and that the Committee of the Whole recommends to Council the Downtown Modernization and Revitalization Project moves to the final report stage and tender preparation stage. Because I have mover in a second. Move Gilligan. Second Van Eggman. Discussion. Am I pending you or are, are you commenting? If I may, Victoria, so this is with this outline, it shows the breakdown of, of everything that we've spent so far on this. The availability of, of 275,000, which is the 100,000 that we took out of modernization grant at the budget year to spend this year, and the balance of the 72,000 from the 100,000, right? So, with all of that being said, you are at the tendering stage and ready for that? Uh, Deputy Mayor Arthur, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, no, part of the resolution is that we move to the final report stage and then tender preparation stage. So we need to have either final drawings prepared or part of the request for project that we put out for, ten, um, for tender. We're still trying to have the finalization of the geotechnical investigation. And part of that is important because it's really going to tell us how much in depth we have to go with the project. So once we have that, we know how much of the project has to be done and then what kind of um, method or road council wants to take, whether we want to have like a short term fix, we have long term fix. So right now we're still trying to get all the final results in, have a final report, like either inter just internally with staff to review uh, or bring it back to council for that kind of decision if we need to have it. Um, or if we're ready to go, we can have it through, um, bring it to tendering stage. Any further comments or questions? Clerk, Holly Grant. I would just like to put forward to the public and members of council, if you could take a drive by maybe lane. Um, I know that some people think that it's a band-aid up there, but um, they have boarded up the steps. It actually looks quite nice. The railings are safe around the corner. Um, I know it's not as appeasing as completely to the point where we need to be, um, but I am extremely proud of the staff um, that would be building and planning as well as roads and everybody else that's pitched in to help um, to move this project thus far where it is. Thank you. Actually, just this is more so for the public and especially Len, is, if he's still listening. So I followed up with um, Rubab and Rubab, our treasurer, has uh, done a tremendous job in summarizing um, what has been spent since 2019 when we received the modernization funding. So she has got it down pat to uh, everything that has gone from the asset management to the secondary plan to um, some of the reserves we did to the architect, to the costs that are here, which leaves us to the balance of the 
$175,622.74. So just in case you have that question, Len, I can tell you that um, um, we have definitely done a very good job on this. So. Thank you. All in favor? Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Van Eggman, aye. Martin, aye. 10 DE Site Plan Control Committee Planning Report 3922. Be it resolved that Committee of the Whole receive this plan for report for information, and that Committee of the Whole recommend that Council approve and enact a Site Plan Control Committee bylaw. Bylaw 3422 at the June 28th, 2022 Council meeting. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved, Van Egmond. Second, Gilligan. Any discussion? All in favor? Question. Uh, Victoria, is this basically just to uh, speed up the process because of the new legislation that's coming through? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Clark. Uh, actually, this is a, a requirement of Bill 109 and the More Homes for Everyone Act. Uh, we are required to have this in place by July 1st. So um, yeah, I'm bringing it forward so that we have it in place and enacted in time for that time uh, deadline. Uh, the rest of Bill 109 that concerns site plan control, uh, those items will be brought forward at a later date and will be enacted with an overall revamp of the site plan control bylaw for the township, um, probably in the fall or early winter, but it has that one has to be in place by January 1st. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? All in favor? Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Van Eggman, aye. Martin, aye. Carried. We move to verbal updates from championship meetings. Governance, be it resolved, the Committee of the Whole received the verbal update from the governance champion, Deputy Mayor Arthur, for information. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Move, Gilligan. Second, Van Eggman. Sandra. You would, or do you want us to read all these out or carry on? Approved. Okay. All in favor? All in favor? Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Ben Eggman, aye. Martin, aye. 12B Infrastructure, be it resolved that Committee of the Whole received the update from Infrastructure Champion Mayor Martin for information. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved, Arthur. Second, Clark. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Ben Eggman, aye. Martin, aye. Planning and Development, be it resolved that Committee of the Whole received this update from Planning and Development Champion Councillor Clark for information. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Move, Gilligan. Second, Ben Eggman. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Ben Eggman, aye. Martin, aye. 12D, Protection Services, be it resolved, Committee of the Whole received this update from Protection Services Champion Councillor Gilligan for information. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Move, Clark. Second, Van Eggman. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Ben Eggman, aye. Martin, aye. Recreation and facilities, be it resolved the committee of the whole received the update from Parks and Recreation Champion, Councillor Van Eggman for information. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Move Gilligan. Second, Arthur. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. Gilligan, aye. Van Eggman, aye. Martin, aye. Open forum. Members of the public 
have three minutes to ask general questions and are not to enter into debate. Please state your name and address for the records. Each member may speak only once. Are there any questions from the public? <laughs> Good You're evening, not... Madam Mayor. <laughs> Hi, Len, how are you? Good, good. <clears throat> uh, Len Patterson here, Colburn. I I, uh, I understand, I don't know, did you purchase a new fire truck? We did. Okay, yeah. And you saved hundreds, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars purchasing it, buying it. And <clears throat> I'm just wondering, like how many man hours did it actually take for the person who found it, found it way out in BC, it was only a click of a mouse, so not as if they had to go there, um, to buy this. And I understand, so it would have been bought not the regular way that you guys or you especially and all of the counselors love to do it by posting it on some little web page uh that they actually went out and found it and bought it and we're going to get it right away instead of waiting maybe four years and paying hundreds of thousands of dollars more um so what so my comment is why can't you use this system all the time it's ridiculous, but anyway, I know I've taken a lot of flack over the years and I've been bugging for this five years now and to see it finally work once, actually twice, because we've seen it with a tractor, um, headway, we're making headway. That's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. It's all because of you. Any further questions from the public? Then, Mr. Ed. Motion to adjourn. Second that. Favor? Thank you all. Aye, Arthur. Aye, Clark. <laughs> Gilligan, aye. Ben Eggman, aye. Martin, aye. Nighty night. <laughs>